hello good day viewers you are welcome to my youtube channel this is chemistry hangout today we are going to be looking at the solution to the just concluded neco chemistry practical i'm actually doing this because some of our subscribers have actually urged me to actually do this so that they can actually know their mistakes that's number one and number two it can guide us for further exams like people that are writing work you know you're still going to be doing this practical so we can actually see it from another perspective there are some places we lose marks but as students we don't know and that's the reason why sometimes you want to have a1 at the end of the day you'll be seeing c4 you'll be seeing b3 and we know that our practical work carries a whole lot of marks okay so i'll be showing us some of the mistakes we do in practicals like this how can we actually correct that and how can we have our full mark for this very particular practical questions please for people that are taking why this is an, another opportunity for you to actually this we actually guide you is an opportunity for you to see the way it is done so that you don't make same mistakes the neco students actually made so i have the question here with me and i'll be solving that today i have the question here with me the neco the just concluded neco question i have it with me so this is the question i was starting from number one in fact for you that have actually watched my video the video on titration is just like a prophecy it's like a prophecy if you have watched that video then this question should not be a problem because my video my previous video on titration and even the qualitative analysis covers around 95 percent of the question that is being given so but i'm still doing this to actually still guide us and give us that confidence we need for further exams so the number one i'm starting from number one says all your burette readings initial and final as well as the size of your pipette must be recorded but no account of experimental procedure is required all calculations must be done on this question paper please that those instructions are important they said A is a solution of sodium hydrogen tetrazo sulfate 6 containing 12.75 gram per dm cube. Why B is a solution of sodium hydroxide? Please, if you have not watched the titration I did, please go and watch it because I will not be doing the titration here. I will just be solving directly. So the A now said put A into the burette and titrate with 20 centimeter cube or 25 centimeter cube portion of B using methyl orange as indicator. Repeat the words, the titration three more times and record your results on the table below. So I'm not doing the practical and I've done that in my previous video. Please, if you have not actually watched that video please try and watch that and if you have not subscribed to this channel please i will urge you to subscribe so that and you click on the notification bell so that when we drop exciting chemistry videos like that you will be notified so if you have not subscribed please kindly subscribe to the channel so they now gave us a space here for the volume of pipettes used i said in my last video it's possible for you to use 20 centimeter cube pipette or you use 25 centimeter cube pipette but most schools actually has the 25 centimeter cube pipette so i'm recording the volume of pipette now which is 25 centimeter cube i hope you are following now the titration the rough don't forget our titrations the rough will be in centimeter cube okay the first two will be in centimeter cube very important those units in centimeter cube the third two in centimeter cube are we together now all those ones are in centimeter cube very very important now our titrations too are in what are in centimeter cube very important now okay now the final bullet readings i'll be using the same readings from my previous video please if you have not watched that video kindly do that so for my rough the my rough is for the previous video i did was 22.60 so my initial then was 0, 0.00 are we together my first in my previous video was 22.30 if you remember why well, my initial year is 0, 0.00 i hope we are actually following i know we are, we are following and my second if you remember was around 44 if i'm not mistaken my second then was 44. Point six zero that's my final because my initial then again i did not refill if you have watched that very particular 
video. I did not refill. You know, I did two titrations plus my rough making three. But here, they requested for three. So I can just say, okay, this one is 22.40. Okay. Why this one I refilled, which is 0, 0.00. Zero. Very important. So I subtract, I'll be having 22.60. This one I'll be having 22.30. This one I'll still be having 22.30. Then I'll be having 22.40. I hope you are following now. That is my my titrations now that I've recorded. Very, very important. Please note, if you look at my table, they are all in two decimal places. Yes, when you are recording your your readings in the table, that's your burette readings, they have to be in two decimal places for accuracy. So please note that. If you look at my table now, that's one of the places. Because this table alone carries six marks. Your unit is important and to two decimal places is important. So from here, after filling my table, I have number one, calculate the average title value. How do we calculate our average title value? So I'm taking the, the three. You know, in my video, I did two plus rough making three but now i have four so i'm taking the three i'm not taking the rough because it's it's far from the first second third titrations okay so i'm taking this three then i'm dividing by three so i will have my average my average title value is equal to the first one plus the second one plus the third one then I'll divide by what? Three. Are we together? So my average title value will be equal to 22.30 plus 22.30 plus 22.40 divided by what? Three. Are we together now? Divide by three. So my average, my average title value is so 22.20 this is my calculator plus 22.30 plus 22.40 okay then i divide by three then i'll be having 22.33 approximately 33 centimeter cube very important my unit I carries two marks already. Then they said, state a reason. The second question now. State a reason why Methy Orange is the suitable indicator. Indicator. Okay? Indicator for this reaction. Indicator for this solution. Why are we using Methy Orange? Because this very particular titration, of course, you can use phenotaphylline and you can use Methy Orange too. But why are you using Methy Orange? Because we know the rules of titration. Strong acid against strong base, you can use any indicator. Strong acid against weak base, you can use Methy Orange, okay? Weak acid against strong base, you use phenotaphylline. Why weak acid, weak base, you use any indicator. So, but why are we using Methy Orange here as a suitable indicator? If you look at our A, this is an acidic salt. That's sodium hydrogen. Sodium hydrogen has N, A, H, S, O, for that's an acidic salt against a weak base against a strong base which is sodium hydroxide we have acidic salt against a strong base now and that's the reason why we are using material so i will tell them that's one mark because the titration because the titration is between an acidic salt Acidic salt and a strong base. Okay, that's the reason why we are using. That's one mark. We have gotten the mark for that. And as I mentioned, one precaution taken to ensure sodium hydrogen tetrazosulfate solution is not contaminated by the burette. You know, this is the acidic salt now, and that's what you are putting in your burette. And if you have watched my last video, my previous video on titration, I told you that one of the things you do is that you wash the solution. You wash the, the burette with the solution it is too old. Okay? You wash the burette with the solution it is too old to ensure accuracy. So, one of, measure one precaution taken to ensure sodium hydrogen tetrazosulfate six solution is not contaminated by the burette. So, I will just tell them, uh, wash the 
bullet with the solution solution it is too old it is too old in brackets i can put that solution there which is n a h s o 4 to avoid contamination to avoid contamination that's another mark wonderful that's another one mark got it i hope we are following so i washed the bullet with the solution it is too old. And what is the solution? It is too old. That's the sodium hydrogen tetrasulfate to avoid contamination. I hope we are okay with this. I hope we are clear with this. Now, in continuation of that, they said the equation of the reaction is this. Can we see that? From your results and information provided, wow, calculate the concentration of A in mole per dm cube. If you remember in my video, this was the same thing I did. So if you are not you have not actually watched that video. Please, I will, I will really endeavor you. I will really urge you. I will, I will persuade you to please watch that video, especially for YX students that are preparing for the, the oncoming YX. Very, very important. You need to watch that video. This was the same question we saw. Okay, let's see. It said, from the result and information provided, calculate the concentration of A. So what is A? Let's go back to the question. A is this. They gave us the mass of A. Are we together? I want to calculate a mole per dm cube. So we say our mole... Don't forget, is equal to our mass over molar mass. Why am I using this? They gave me the mass in the question, and I have I can calculate the, the molar mass. So I can just do something like this. I can divide it. Then I'll say molar mass. I need to tell them the molar mass of NaHSO4. The atomic masses is given already. So we have sodium to be 23 plus 1 plus sulfur that's 32 plus 16 times 4 okay so we have 23 plus 1 plus 32 plus 64 so the calculator and we have that and we have 23 plus 1 plus 32 plus 64 and that's giving me what 120 gram per mole very important that unit is very very important very very important 120 gram per mole where our mass now what is our mass is given in the question already 12.75 gram per dm cube are we together so our mole now becomes what is our mass that's 12.75 gram per dm cube over what is our mole 120 gram per mole so our gram we cancel our gram are we together so our mole becomes 12.75 12 12.75 divide 120 so we are having a zero don't forget to three significant figure you know i've told you that two three significant figures so i have one my answer here is 0 0.10625 so, but the three significant figure I have is 0 0.106 mole per dm cube. Very important. That's another two marks gotten. Okay. Our consideration of B in mole per dm cube. If you go back to the question, B is a solution of sodium hydroxide. They did not give us the mass concentration or the mole now. So, definitely our mole is equal to mass of our molar mass will not work. Okay. So, we use that our titration formula, which is CAVA over CBVB equals to NA over NB. You need to pay attention to this. If you look at it, that's four marks. Okay, so we need to state what is our CA. That's concentration of acid. We have 0 0.106 with those units. The units are important. Mole per dm cube. Okay, what is our VA? That's our average titer which is 22.33 centimeter cube. Okay, now, what is our CB? That's what we are looking for. Okay, what is our VB? That's volume of pipette recorded already here. If you look at it, that's 25 centimeter cube. Are we together? Then our NA, now, number of moles of acid in the equation, that's one mole of sodium hydrogen tetrasulfate. If you look at this, you don't have anything here, but that means one mole of this. So that's our 
number of moles of acid here a number of moles of base definitely it is one two because you have one mole of this you know you're not seeing anything here you know you have one mole of sodium hydroxide so from there what happens we set our formulas so we have ca 0 0.106 times va 22.33 over we have cb that's what we are looking for times our vb that's 25 then we have na1 over 1 so making cb the subject we are going to have 0 0.106 times 22.33 okay over 25 can say times 1 times 1 is still going to give us the same value okay so our c b becomes s is our calculator our c b becomes 0 0.106 times 22.33 okay divide 25 we are having 0 0.0946792 don't forget that has to be in three significant figures so we have 0 0.0 Nine four seven. I have four six seven. So that's how I'm approximating to three significant figure DM cube. Are we together? You don't need to panic. If you look at the answer, some of us in our centers we use different title values, okay? But if we still use the same range, we are still going to be getting almost the same answer. No matter the title value you used in your school, just follow the normal calculation procedure. It will still be very very correct okay that's four marks got in already then we have concentration of b in gram per dm cube so we know that we know the concentration in mole per dm cube now so our mole here is 0 0.0947 can we see that now our mass is what we are actually looking for don't forget b is sodium hydroxide then our molar molar mass of sodium hydroxide they have given us the atomic masses, so we have 23 plus 16 plus 1. That gives us 23 plus 16, that's 39 plus 1. That's 40 gram per mole. Please don't be in an haste. These units are very... Okay, now the molar mass is what? It's 23 plus 16 plus 1, that's 40 gram per mole. Please pay maximum attention to those units. Now, we have our mole now. We want to calculate our mole now, Okay. We want to calculate our mass now because it said concentration of B in gram per dm cube. So our mole equal to mass of our molar mass. Mass equal to mole times molar mass. Then our mass becomes 0 0.09477 times 40. So we have our mass to be 3.79 gram per dm cube. I hope we get that. So our molar mass is 40 gram per mole. Don't forget our concentration of B in gram per dm cube. And that's what we are looking for. So we have gotten our mole. We know our molar mass. So we make mass the subject of formula. So our mass becomes mole times molar mass. So our mass becomes 0 0.0947, which, the, which is the answer here, times our molar mass, which is 40 gram per mole. So our mass is what is 3.79 gram per dm cube. Okay, moving to the third question. Now that's B3. Mass of the salt formed. What is the salt that will be formed? If you look at the equation of reaction, this is the salt. That's sodium sulfate. That's the salt that will be formed. They did not give us anything about sodium sulfate. If you look at the question, they did not give us anything about sodium sulfate. They just said B is a solution of sodium hydroxide. Okay? And A is the solution of this. So they didn't even make mention of sodium sulfate in the question. So how do we solve for the mass of salt form which is sodium sulfate we use stoichiometry so how do we go about that we can use any of either the acid or the base anyone will actually give us the mass of this so i can say this okay one mole from the equation of reaction one mole of naoh is equal to one mole of sodium sulfate where did i get that from the equation of reaction you see one mole of this there is one the invisible one i'm not seeing but one mole of sodium hydroxide this one mole of sodium sulfate that's why i got one mole of sodium hydroxide equal to one mole of sodium sulfate so from there we cannot calculate the amount in moles of sodium hydroxide okay so the amount in moles of sodium hydroxide the concentration times volume over 1000 are we together so the amount now 
in moles of NaOH will be equal to what is the concentration now? That's our CB now. Concentration of our CB, we have gotten that here. That's 0 0.0947 times what is the volume of our base? That's 25. That's 25 over 1000. So our amount in moles will be equal to our amount in moles will be equal to 0 0.0947 times 25 divided by 1000 that will be giving us 0 0.00237 approximately because I have 2375 here so the three significant figures are 237 moles please those units are important. Okay, which means that if one mole of sodium hydroxide equal to one mole of this, amount of moles of sodium hydroxide is this. Okay, so we can now say 0 0.00237 moles of sodium hydroxide will be equal to what is 0 0.00237 moles of sodium sulfate. So I hope you are paying attention. That's stoichiometry. But they ask us to look for the mass. They ask us to look for the mass of the salt form. The salt form is sodium sulfate. We have gotten it in mole. So we can now say mole is equal to mass because we are getting the mass over molar mass. So I need to get the molar mass of sodium sulfate, molar mass of Na2SO4. That will be 23 times 2 plus 32 plus 16 times 4. So that will give me 46 plus 32 plus 64. So 42, 46 plus 32, 46 plus 32 plus 64. That will give us 142 gram per mole. This very interesting, 142 gram per mole. So we now look for the mass now. The mass will now be 142 times, you know, mass will now be mole times molar mass times 0 0.00237. So the mass now, 142 times 0 0.00237. That will give us 0 0.33, approximately, let's say 0 0.033, just say 7, approximately 7 gram of sodium sulfate. That's that, of sodium sulfate. So that's all for number one. Please, if, let's still go through them for clarity's sake, okay? Go through them for clarity's sake. That's number one. Go through them for clarity's sake. Clarity sake, should in case you are not getting anyone there, that's just number one solution. That's number one. If I'm not getting it, okay, that's number one. That's number one. And that's number one. I hope we are following. Okay, so from there now, this is the number two. Wow, this is the same thing. This number two is, oh my God, if you have not watched that my previous video on qualitative analysis, please, I will urge you to go and watch it. Kindly go and watch because it's the same. But I'll just be filling it appropriately here. Okay, they said, A, C plus 5 centimeter of distilled water and shake thoroughly. Divide the solution into two portions. If you go and check that my video, what happened? We said, C, we see that C dissolved. C dissolved completely 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 in water okay or in distilled water no in distilled water c dissolves that's one mark okay what is your influence if c dissolves completely in water then say c is what is soluble you don't need to over report i just say c is soluble because they said you are provided with sample c they did not tell you maybe it is a sort or Anything that's the reason I'm not writing since the soluble salt. But if you have written since the soluble salt, don't worry, you are fine, it is good. You can still report like that. But C is soluble. Okay, to the first portion, add sodium hydroxide. Don't forget the salt is ammonium carbonate. And if you add 
sodium hydroxide to ammonium carbonate what happens if you don't forget and you eat ammonia gas will be liberated but at first look at this please pay attention to this these three marks okay look at the way i'm reporting these three marks you can't just write something here you expect them to give you three marks no so the first thing is that the first one is that no if you add it there will not be visible reaction until you eat it that's the first thing you have three marks here that's the first now the second one when you begin to eat what happened evolution of gas or a gas that is choking that is choking or that has a pungent smell a gas that is choking is liberated or you say a colorless you can say a colorless gas very important a colorless gas that is choking is liberated or we can say a, a colorless gas that has a choking smell is liberated do you get that now so a colorless gas that is choking is liberated okay and if it is liberated you need to tell us as the gas is being liberated is it acidic is it basic you need to tell us that's why you have three marks so i'll say that this choking is liberated tons tons red because it is basic the gas that is uh, that is liberated is an alkaline gas so it's a tons red litmus paper blue can we see that three marks the first one the second one and the third one very important now your inference two marks so we have nh3 gas from nh4 plus that's the two marks if you just write nh gas uh, nh3 gas you are, you are going to get one mark because you didn't tell us where that very particular gas is liberated from so but with this you get your two marks i hope that is clear so these are places students lose a whole lot of mark and i want this to be a guide this will be serving as a guide now okay the number two Deep theory rod into the dilute ACL and bring it close to the gas. Wow. If you go and check that my video, that's why it is just one, one mark. Formation. That's the test. Confirmatory test for ammonia and even ACL itself. Formation of a white dense film. Or you can say a white dense film is observed. We are still saying the same thing. Then, yeah, just one mark. Because that's a confirmatory test. You said NH3 gas is what is confirmed. I hope you are following. Okay. To this, they said to the second portion, add drops of barium. Because they asked you to divide into two. So when you add drops of barium chloride to the solution, what happens? You are going to observe. That's why you have one mark. There will be what? A white... A white precipitate precipitate a white precipitate observed on addition of barium chloride solution and when you add barium chloride to a solution and you have a white precipitate three ions are likely to be present that's the reason why they wrote three can you see that they wrote three. So what are the, the ions that are likely to be present? We have CO3, 2 minus, comma, SO3, 2 minus, comma, and we have SO4, 2 minus, likely present. Can we see? That gives you your full mark. If you write only this, one mark. If you add, write this and this, two marks, then the three gives you your full three marks. Okay. Now to the solution in C, I add dilute ACL. Can we see that now? When you add dilute ACL, you have one mark. So what happened is that a colorless and odorless gas is observed. Or a color and odorless gas is formed or observed. Can we see that? A colorless and odorless gas is observed or is formed. Can we see? Now, if a colorless and odorless gas is formed, don't forget to the solution in this, add this. When you add it, when you add it, very important, the, the white precipitate will dissolve. The white precipitate dissolves. 
That's this very particular white precipitate. On adding this, the white precipitate dissolves. Now, when the white precipitate dissolves, one is out here. Yeah. The one that will be remaining will be SCO32 minus and SO32 minus. Can we see that? SO4 cannot dissolve in ACA, meaning we are left with two. Now, when I add this and the white precipitate dissolves, okay, there will be evolution of gas, which is colorless and odorless. Can we see that? Now, if the gas is colorless and odorless, your SO32 minus will not be the one that will be gotten because your SO32 minus will liberate SO2 gas and SO2 gas is colored. Can we see that now? But if CO2 gas is liberated from CO32 minus, CO2 is odorless and colorless. Definitely, the inference here will be what? The inference here will be CO2 gas, okay, from, from CO32 minus. Can we see that? So CO2 gas from CO32 minus. Of course, if they, you don't need to over report because if you CO2, you know, you pass it into lime water, it turns lime water, milky, and stuff like that. So CO2 gas from here is confirmed. Another 16 mark got in. Wow, that's wonderful. Then we move to the last one now. We move to the last one. When sodium hydroxide is added to an unknown salt, a white, please note this statement, chalky precipitate is formed. Measure two ions that are likely to be present. That's still your qualitative analysis. The two ions that will be present will be either it is lead or it is calcium ion. They said measure two ions. Can you see? If you just write lead, you are reading lead metal. You are wrong. If you write CA, you are reading calcium, <laughs> calcium metal. You are wrong. So they said ions. It must carry a charge. So these two are likely to be present. If it is chalky, white chalky precipitate, that's lead and calcium. Then the next one, they said define concentrated acid. Okay. So concentrated, you know we have concentrated acid, we have dilute acid. Acid are solutions where there are more acid molecules than water molecules. Why some other people will say concentrated acid is a type of acid where you have large amounts of acid or quantity of acid add to small amount of water. You are still very, very correct. If that is what you have written, you are correct. Some people will say concentrated acid are acid that have high concentration of hydrogen ion. You are still correct. Okay. So any of those definitions are correct. Why our strong acid? Okay. Our strong, you know, we have strong acid, we have weak acid. Our strong acid are acids that ionizes completely. In water, yes, a strong acid ionizes completely in water, and that's why they are strong electrolytes, they can conduct electricity. So, the C measure one laboratory use of activated charcoal. Oh, I will see if I can actually do this on my channel to actually show us how activated charcoal is used in the laboratory because it's a one laboratory use, very important. So, our activated charcoal is used, it is used, it is used as a Adsorbent. What do we mean by that? You know, in our acid-based titration, we use methyl orange. You add methyl orange to, to the base, okay, to change the color. So if you want to remove the color of the methyl orange, what you use is activated charcoal. To remove that color of methyl orange, you can use the activated charcoal. It serves as absorbent. It will absorb the very the colored material. Then you are now have the clear solution. Of course, we have other uses of activated charcoal. We can use it in the whitening of teeth too, yes. We can use it for extraction of metals and so many other uses. But it's a one laboratory use. So it is used as adsorbent because it's actually it's used for removing colored substance from, from, from a solution. So we can use it as adsorbent. That's one laboratory use of that. Okay, give the color of the gas giving off when this is heated. Okay, for us to understand this, let me write the equation of reaction. Of course, we are not asked to write the equation of reaction. So let me just write the equation of reaction here so that you understand. When lead nitrate is heated, lead nitrate is heated, we are going to have lead 2 oxide plus NO2 plus O2. Are we together? This is solid, this is a gas, and this is a gas. Is the equation balanced? No. So we have, okay, we have 2. I have two here. Balance. Okay, I have four. The equation should be balanced now. I have four. Two lead, two lead. Balance. Nitrogen is four. Nitrogen is four. Balance. Oxygen is 
6, 12, okay? Oxygen is 2, 10 plus 8, 10, 12. Balance. Okay, when you eat lead nitrate, definitely it's going to liberate oxygen gas. Most nitrate, most nitrate compounds, nitrate compounds liberate O2. Now, the gas, I give the color of the gas giving off. If you check this, you have two gas giving off, NO2 and O2, but they say give the color. I cannot say O2, I cannot record O2 because oxygen gas is colorless and odorless. Can we see that? So I'm recording this now. Now, what is the color of NO2 gas? The color of NO2 gas is reddish brown. That's the color of NO2 gas. NO2 gas is it's reddish brown. Okay, so what is the color of the residue produced in this? Look at this, this solid gas, lead 2 oxide, nitrogen 4 oxide, and oxygen gas. These ones are gas gas. That means they'll be giving off. So the residue now is the lead 2 oxide. So from experience, from experience, the color of lead 2 oxide, from experience, when it is cold, is yellow. From experience. I'm talking from experience now. Yes, if you have, you can actually eat this. If you eat this, look at the lead two oxide, nitrogen four oxide, and this because I've actually done this before. And the color of the lead two oxide that is actually formed from my practical work is what is yellow. Okay, when it is hot, when you eat it to, when you eat your lead two oxide to a very extreme temperature, you can have red. Talking from experience now, when you eat it to a very extremely high temperature, when it is hot, it becomes red, but when it is cold, it becomes yellow. And that is just the question that is being given. I hope we have actually seen our mistakes, so I want us to go over it for other subsequent exams so that we can be able to actually put our wrong to right so, the, so that we don't lose a whole lot of marks in an exam so very very important very very important if you have not subscribed to this channel please i will urge you to do so and click on the notification bell so that when we drop exciting chemistry videos like this you will be notified have a wonderful day